This is a look into a bone tactical strength and conditioning kickboxing style workout geared towards women's self-defense. Here we're wrapping the hands to protect the small bones of the hands and knuckles because in a closed fist punching technique those bones can easily break. That's also why we don't use many closed fist punching techniques or teach them for self-defense because you won't have your hands wrapped in a real self-defense scenario. We begin every exercise with a warm-up to raise core body temperature, prepare the central nervous system for exercise, and loosen certain parts of the body as you see here like the neck, shoulders, and core. While we're warming up the body with some body spins, we begin some target recognition drills. The head and eyes turn to the reverse first. The eyes recognize the target and then the fists strike the target. This helps with awareness and body positioning and head positioning. We'll move into some bag work. Just practicing absolute essentials and movement patterns, not moving too quickly. Then some shadow boxing, speeding things up a little bit, and slowly start to work our way into some combos. We then trade blows with a partner to get used to target areas on the human body and how it feels to give out some blows and to receive some blows on these target areas. While trading blows with our partner, we stress the importance of maintaining a defensive body position. Hands covering the face, elbows protecting the rib cage, light on your feet so you can easily bring up the knees or move out of the way of certain kicks and punches. We practice certain striking techniques seen here and then returning our body to a more defensive position with fluidity. In the fighting position our most forward hand is our weapon hand. It's used for speed for striking, for keeping distance between yourself and your opponent. Our rear hand is mainly a defensive hand protecting the side of the face, indexing the temple with the middle finger. Throughout all strikes the elbows remain as close to the body as possible, maintaining protection of the rib cage and abdomen while also being able to be used for counter strikes. In our fighting position, 70% of our weight is distributed onto the rear foot and 30% of our body weight is distributed onto the forward foot. But because we remain light on our feet, there's up to a 50% change in our weight transfer between feet and we don't keep heavy on either foot for very long. Very similarly to the elbows and forearms, the knees can be raised and the shins can be used to defensively block and even a little bit of offense in the defense to attack certain strikes as they're coming in. As I mentioned before, we stress using knees, elbows, shins, feet, and the multitude of open hand strikes the human body is capable of. These strikes are not only more powerful due to the potential for joint collapse in punching techniques, they're also safer for the user to perform and they're easier for a beginner student to learn. Here you can see ridge hand and knife hand strikes. The ridge hand is thrown similar to an overhand punch except with an open hand. Throwing the ridge hand a bit to the outside of the target with the chin low and the shoulder high, turning the body into the target allows your hand to naturally be drawn in to the target area which is the side of the face. If the ridge hand misses its target the elbow remains forward and the knife hand is a quick extension of the arm striking for the opposite side of the face. We practice these strikes as shown here in combination with other open palm strikes, knees and elbows. The main target areas for open hand strikes to the head are the masseter muscle 
the vagus nerve near the temple, the large nerve cluster behind the ear, and open hand slaps to the ear with the potential of rupturing eardrums. We then move into some Muay Thai style clinch work for the end of our first beginner level session.